Where are the most toxic places on Earth? Well, this is Love Canal, one of the most toxic places in the entire world. I'm here in Niagara Falls, New York in the United States to show you this place that is only surpassed by Chernobyl as the most toxic place in the world. And now, 40 years later, neighbors are claiming that there are still toxic materials coming into their homes and in their basements. For more than 20 years, I have traveled the world as a cameraman and documentary filmmaker. In that time, I have always tried to see things with a unique light, with my own perspective. This time, the story led me to Love Canal. As part of this film, we were invited by some people that live in these neighborhoods to see what's inside their basements and in their front yards. And what we found, quite frankly, was shocking. But that's not science. That's preliminary observation. But with testing, we can have a better source of data and possibly proof that there is materials leaking from this landfill. Garbage is everywhere. It always has been and most likely always will be. You can burn it, you can hide it, or you can bury it. But sometimes garbage comes back to bite you. At the turn of the 20th century, a man named William Love had a dream. Electricity was being manufactured for public use. Water was plentiful and William Love owned a bunch of land near Niagara Falls, one of the great wonders of the world. And he dug a canal so that there could be transportation for his new model city that he had developed as a place a utopian community to live in. But one thing led to another and William Love's dream collapsed and became a nightmare. And in the 1940s, a company called Hooker Chemical bought that land over there and filled it in with industrial waste. By 1953, the canal was filled with over 20,000 tons of chemical wastes, including caustic solvents and pesticides. Hooker had no further use for the canal, and with no regulations in place to stop them at the time, they simply covered the dump site with a layer of clay and soil from the area. Years later, that land was sold to the city of Niagara Falls for $1. And the city of Niagara Falls eventually built a school and they had playgrounds and there were houses all through here. And it was a wonderful, thriving community starting in the 1940s through the middle of the 1970s. But it was around that time that rumors started to fly around that the children that they were playing on the playgrounds were stepping in stuff that was this liquidy, black substance that would come up out of the ground in this area. And they'd get it on their shoes and they'd go home and their moms would clean it off. And the water often stunk in the basements of these houses, smelled like bad. And then the rumors started going around about a lot of the young mothers were having miscarriages. Babies were coming out with birth defects people seem to be contracting cancer at a higher than usual rate, respiratory diseases. Now, many residents had health disorders back then and they attributed that to chemicals seeping into their homes and their neighborhood. To get a better idea of how the Love Canal story became so huge, I spoke with veteran news journalist and documentary filmmaker Rich Newberg who was an anchor for the nightly news and covered many environmental news stories in that era. First of all, thanks for coming out today. It's awesome to be thanks here Thanks for with asking you. me. Yeah, and, and my question to you is, um, what do you know about how all this began? I mean, when did this erupt? 1976, 
sump pumps are starting to pump stuff up into basements. Along comes a cub reporter, Michael Brown, Niagara Gazette, takes an interest in not only the sump pumps, but big, big toxic waste issues in Niagara County. He's at a public meeting. A young woman breaks into tears. She lives in a place called Love Canal. There's a stench, stuff coming up. She's worried about her family. And Michael says, whoa. Talks to a city engineer who's aware of this, who tells him our children and their children are at risk. So Michael goes door to door in the Love Canal neighborhood. <clears throat> the first family he reaches has a young child with multiple birth defects, serious birth defects. The family has issues, health issues. Goes to another door, more health issues, cancer. He starts putting two and two together and starts writing about it. After the first Housewife named Lois Gibbs gets Lois wind of this. Her son is at school, suddenly coming down with epilepsy for no reason. There's not, no history in the family. She begins going door to door. And lo and behold, every block has issues and something's happening. They start realizing that kids were getting burned in their backyards, uh, playing in pools of junk. Stuff is coming up. And that's how it begins. In fact, Hooker Chemical, now known as Oxy, went on television to say that there was no proven threat to the residents of Love Canal. The first question to be asked is, do you feel that this story has been blown out of proportion? Oh, yes. Why? Very much so. Well, I think uh, you just blew it out of proportion when you introduced it by saying an epidemic of miscarriages and other diseases. And... Uh, I think the best medical studies of the area would say that that's completely false. How about the 15 pregnancies, uh, many of which to, uh, resulted in miscarriage, though, during the time of this whole problem? Well, I don't know where that evidence comes from, because it certainly doesn't come from any of the state studies. Well, why would the state of New York declare an emergency and order evacuation the, if there were not true health problems? The state of New York uh, declared an emergency on the basis of possible health effects. And that emergency was declared after a very cursory study, uh, an epidemiology study done by the state. And in fact, a panel just uh, recently uh, appointed by Governor Kerry to study all of the health effects at Love Canal has concluded that there really are no health effects of Love Canal that are associated with, uh, with the chemicals. So out of our and then, a few minutes later, directly contradicted himself by admitting they had put dangerous chemicals and hazardous waste in the trench that was Love Canal. Man, we knew there were uh, dangerous chemicals uh, in what we had put in Love Canal when we deeded it. And in fact, the deed, which was uh, accepted by the, by the uh, school board, uh, recognizes the fact that there are hazardous wastes in that canal and it also absolves Hooker Chemical from any problems associated with those chemicals that comes up in later days. Now, I have a copy of the brief of that. What theme. Bader did not address well, was like the possibility it, that I these known best, and dangerous neurotoxic that? chemicals yes. that Hooker created so and dumped there were likely to have escaped and caused harm to these children. Additionally, had the city of Niagara Falls not dug sewers into and across the old canal and built the school and playground directly on top of the dump, things might be different. But they did, and it harmed children. Three or four children had been burned by material at the old Love Canal property, which had been deeded to the school board several years ago. These children were burned while playing on earth, if excavated in the construction of this new road. You no longer owned that property, you say, at this, at this point, when these two right. children were burned. That's right. Wasn't it your moral responsibility, and doesn't it continue to be, since you, your company, dumped the chemicals? Don't, isn't there a moral responsibility I mean, here? There absolutely is, and if you'll go back, I have another fact line which really will give As you the As for facts. blame, the company claimed that in 1958, the company even sent its own lawyers to a school board meeting in Niagara Falls to remind the board that there were, quote, dangerous chemicals buried at the site 
and that the land should not be sold to developers for construction of homes. But when the New York Times tried to verify this story, no record of this warning could be found. But in the end, Hooker made the stuff in the first place. When rotting barrels and smelly black sludge came up out of the ground that children were playing in and getting chemical burns from, neither city officials or those from Hooker attempted to alert local residents. Both tried to deny and brush off talk of any threat from the canal. Love Canal was a clay vault and those hazardous wastes were put in the bottom of the canal and four foot of clay was put over those wastes. What about the sides and the bottom? The sides and the bottom are all clay. There are, there are they people do not that leak. say they Excuse are not me. even covered. Before that material was deeded, we sunk test wells within one foot of the canal walls and found no chemicals. Those canal walls today have not been breached. What breached those canal walls were the streets and the sewers that the, the city ran through there in direct defiance of our wishes and in direct defiance to public meetings where we had with them, telling them that it violated the deed which they had done with us. And, and the federal government came in here and started to try to figure out how they're gonna fix the problem. The state of New York is now trying to drain off any liquid which seeps out of the canal. But workers made a chilling discovery. They found traces of the dread substance dioxin, which is a waste product. The problem was that there was a lot more in there than dioxin. All sorts of chemicals related to the manufacture of pesticides were found in the dump. Among them, lindane and other materials from the manufacturer of the defoliant called Agent Orange that was widely used in the Vietnam War. So they created the Superfund cleanup and they buried it or reburied it all under that hill. They installed some pumps and a layer of clay on top. And presumably, that's where this stuff is going to remain for all time. Someday, that's going to be older than the pyramids of Egypt. And judging by how they've marked it, nobody's going to know about it. After we had started filming, we were contacted by several people who live in the area and were sent videos of red sludge coming out from very near this place. And when I arrived there, I found another local news guy who said he had contacted the DEC and that it was likely to be an iron-eating bacteria. And that reminded me of what I had found a few years ago filming in Centralia, Pennsylvania. So, it's not conclusive, and the DEC did agree to retest that site. And we'll find out what those results will be in the next episode. As I was researching this project, I made contact with a longtime resident of the Love Canal neighborhood who told me she thinks she has toxic sludge coming into her basement. So we drove over there to take a look for ourselves. And what we found there was shocking and scary. I spoke to one person who's lived here a long time who is very sick with a rare disease. And it's bigger than just Love Canal. What people don't tell you is Love Canal was just one of three huge toxic barrel type waste dumps in the same area here. Town, another worried neighborhood, another hooker dump, located by a creek called Bloody Run. The dump at Bloody Run is massive, 16 acres, 80,000 tons of waste, four times what is buried at the Love Canal. Love Canal was the one that was just discovered to be leaking and contaminating and poisoning 
the people of this neighborhood. Birth defects were the number one problem in childbirth of people who lived in this area. Well, the state health department urged that pregnant women and children under two get out of the area closest to the... They came in, they cleaned this place up, or they said they did. They did probably the best they could, but what they found was all the barrels that Hooker Chemical, that's now called Occidental, were buried, and there were so many of them that they couldn't just dig them up because they were rotting and falling apart. So they put a cap over the top of it and monitoring wells all around it. But it seems unclear if a sufficient barrier was ever put underneath. And if that is true, does this provide a leak path? So we got to the location and she led us into the oh home God, to show you. us Turn the right. material that was flowing into her basement. What we saw there was shocking. And quite frankly, scary. Because of ongoing litigation, we were asked to protect her identity. We brought along a black light to see if the materials would fluoresce, and they did. Strips and blobs of gunk were distributed all around the dump basin, and the water in the sump drain had a sheen to it, much like what we saw described in numerous news and government reports. Is this a smoking gun? Proof that Love Canal is in fact leaking? The answer is these chemicals had to come from somewhere, but a lot more testing and investigation would need to be done to find out where the chemicals came from that are under this house. We were also given copies of highly confidential documents showing test reports from the home. These independent test results showed tetrachloroethylene, trichloroethylene, dieldrin, entrinketone, and endosulfan as some of the chemicals detected in this location. While Hooker Chemical and local government representatives initially tried to downplay this story, it eventually became too much to deny, and the federal government stepped in. Using money from the newly established Superfund, the remediation began, and some residents and homeowners were eventually removed and the homes were demolished, along with the 99th Street School. The area was divided up into areas or zones. Zones 1 and 2 were deemed permanently uninhabitable, while others had remediation to try to protect the spread of further toxins. So, is Love Canal leaking? Is it still a threat? The answer is, it will always be a threat, till the end of time. And, as for leaks, what we saw in this basement seemed to be consistent with the test reports we were shown, but more testing will be required to get a better idea of what's going on down here. Additionally, in 2011, concerns of rising test levels and leaks from the dump outside the remediated area prompted officials to perform additional work in the area. The ongoing threats from Love Canal could possibly come from two areas. The first is possible leachate migration paths that could originate from the bottom area of the dump below the barrier drain conduit. Migration of these liquefied toxins, with the help of water and time, could possibly find their way through unknown and undetectable fractures and cracks in any part of the cap, upper silt layer, desiccated clay, and possibly the soft clay barrier below that. The second risk is as history has already proven, and that is with human intervention. People unknowingly digging into this area and once again releasing these poisons to the environment. So I just finished up my exploration of Love Canal Part 1 and what I found is pretty, pretty amazing. I had a couple of 
residents who allowed me into their basements to see the stuff that's coming up out of the ground here. And one of the basements under a black light showed the bioluminescent material, which often indicates oils right in this basement. And it wasn't far over that way. And another basement I was in was just over there. And so the question that we had was, is this stuff in fact still leaking? So we drew water tests, or I should say, they allowed me to film them taking tests of the water, wondering if there is in fact toxins in this. They're being sent off to a laboratory and in the next episode, we'll find out what's really going on here at Love Canal.